Welcome back. This is going to be an episode of underwater snorkeling, looking at trout in their natural feeding environment. And I catch some really cool stuff. So you better stick around, see what happens here. Okay. So the first few, I'm just snorkeling halfway around the lake and I'm finding hardly any trout. I'm finding the odd one swimming along the bottom like this one. And they're relating very close to the bottom. And I suspect they're picking off aquatic insects like shrimp, scuds, chironomids, bloodworms, and I'll pause the next time a fish swims away and it's really cool. You can hear actually the thud or the thump of the fish's tail when it goes into like a super fast swimming mode. Here's another one just cruising along the bottom and uh, they're probably looking for food. Okay, listen to this. Hear that? Unreal. That thump of that tail is amazing. You can just hear it as it goes away. Here's another cool looking trout doing exactly the same thing, just scouring the bottom looking for food. You can actually see his mouth open up here, uh, that little white uh, bottom lip come out as he's picking up these little, uh, probably coronamids I'm thinking, uh, bloodworm scuds. You know, this one has an interesting uh, coloration. I've caught this fish most definitely before. Uh, not sure why trout do this. Maybe someone can tell me why they sometimes have these color variations on the heads. Uh, listen to this one also as he swims away. It does the same thing. Okay, what is this? What is creeping? Oh, it's my wife and baby. <laughs> Came out to see me while I was snorkeling around the pond. So, now... As I'm snorkeling around, I wasn't seeing as much, so I started, that was going around the edge, right? I started diving down deeper, and I started seeing more trout, just cruising the actual lake bottom in 12 to 15 feet of water. And I came upon this group. You see this one, there's another one, and you'll start seeing a whole bunch of trout around here. Oh, and so, oh look at that, more and more, look at all those trout in the background there. So... It really goes to show, I do four subsequent dives in the same spot and I just see more and more trout right here as I swim around. That's saying that 90% of fish are in 10% of the lake. Well, look at this. Look at all these fish swimming in such close proximity, whereas I swam halfway around the lake and saw three fish. And I'm seeing 10 fish right here, right around me. Look at this. I'm just spinning around and look at all these trout. You can see them, the shadows and close up. They're everywhere and four subsequent dives, they don't take off. They stay right there. They're feeding so heavily on something in that specific spot of the lake that they aren't going away. They're not even ignoring me. I mean, they're ignoring me. They're staying right there and feeding because they're in feed mode and they're not scared of me. I'm just hanging out down there with these trout. It was pretty cool to see. Every time I dove down, there they were. Look how fat some of these guys are filling up on these aquatic insects. They'll just eat a ton of them. Okay, I think I do one more dive here, and yeah, you see some more fish, and then all of a sudden, fifth dive, I go down, and they're gone. Nothing there. So where do they go? I don't know. Do they, do they hang in schools? Did I finally scare them off? I don't know. But it goes to show that if you can find that 10% of the lake, and it's well worth your effort to go out and to keep moving until you find where you're marking fish because then you know you have a higher chance of starting to catch fish when they start feeding. If you're just fishing the rest of the 90% of the lake and waiting for those one or two fish to come around and bite, your odds are way lower. So as you saw, I just swam down, grabbed a golf ball, and this guy came by. And I don't know why, but this trout let me follow him for several minutes like I wasn't even there. And I learned so much from following this trout and watch really closely. Like he let me get a few inches away from him and he kept on feeding. That was the other interesting thing. So you can really see how he's relating to the bottom, just slowly swimming around and just watch his head motion. You can see as he will see an insect or whatever, or something he wants to check out. His head motion, see there, right there. His head motion will just slightly move to one side or the other or down or up as he grabs an insect. So he's just aimlessly basically swimming along. And this is that other 90% of the lake that I found this guy. This was back closer to my side of the lake, quite far from that rest of that group of fish I was seeing. And so I just followed him because he didn't seem to be scared. 
So I thought, well, let's see what this fish does. As you saw, he just dove down, grabbed something there. So keep an eye on this fish as he just swims along. It's really interesting to see, you know, I couldn't see what he was eating. I mean, you know, you see all this algae and bits of stuff in the water. It's not perfectly clear. It's already, you know, warming up in the springtime. So I couldn't see bugs, but obviously they can. They're eating really tiny creatures. This is why little coronamids that are, you know, size 12, you know, 16, 18 guys use and we'll catch these monster trout. It's because obviously they are keyed in on very small aquatic insects and you keep seeing him make these veers right and left. It's to grab these little tiny bugs because they're eating, you know, hundreds of them a day to accumulate the nutrition and what they need to grow to the sizes that they do. I don't know why this one wasn't scared of me but it was really nice to be able to follow him along so closely and uh, also see how he relates to the structure. So this one was kind of following the edge of the bank, uh, maybe, you know, several feet from shore in about five to seven feet of water. And he would come up the bank like he's doing right now, closer to me into shallower water. And then he'll go back down the bank. He like kind of just changes his path so also the other cool thing is that right up here, we're coming up to some structure like uh, branches or whatever. I thought fish often would swim, you know, like right through branches because aquatic insects are probably more dense, you know, in and around these uh, woody areas and structures. But as you'll see, when we swim up to these branches, he tends to come up towards me. You think I would be the threat he tends to come up towards me and swims over the branches rather than going through them. So I think it's right up here that this actually happens. So you should be well aware of it when you see it and you'll see what I'm talking about. Look at him. He just went down and grabbed a couple things off the bottom there. So that, okay, here, here, here it's happening. You see this brush and stuff on the bottom. So instead of him swimming right through, he actually comes up. He keeps coming up closer to me. And he swims over all, look how high he comes. He comes way up off the bottom to swim over all of that debris and trees and stuff. He doesn't swim through it. Quite interesting. And then he goes right back down to the bottom. So I think this represents why it's so key when you're still water fishing with a float to have that fly in very close proximity to the bottom. You can see this trout is spending 90% of his time, like three to four inches off bottom. If your fly is not, in, yes, that's a hockey net. If your fly is not in that, you know, one to two feet off bottom range, you're never gonna catch a fish. And if you're not catching fish at two feet off and you're marking them on the sonar, then you better move that fly closer to the bottom. I would say the closer to the bottom watching this, the better off you are, unless you're marking them on your sonar all like, you know, three, four, five, six feet off bottom and they're feeding on rising chronomids, then you better be straight in the bottom. So it's a kind of a game of what to do in the situation. Where to start, I would say on the bottom, because look at this guy, he just keeps trending towards the bottom. So. Place your fly, you know, within a foot, foot and a half bottom and see what happens. I would say most of the time you're going to get some action. If that's not half working for you, then move your fly up because you're moving. When you move your fly up, you're moving into that area of the lake where fish are going to spend less time in the spring because they are so focused on this bottom feed zone. Okay. Well, here's some really nice shots. I get to swim along this fish, and it's always cool when you get to swim alongside them underneath the water, and they're not scared of you. Like, look at him, how he comes up, swims right by me. Look how beautiful they are. Just like little torpedoes. Amazing creatures. Look at him gulp up some insects or whatever it is. Look how his eye moves. He's looking around at me. He knows I'm there. Doesn't really seem to care. I don't know why this fish didn't mind me, but it was always, it's always nice when they let you swim alongside them like you're not even there. 
Maybe I haven't caught him yet. He didn't recognize me. Okay, so we're getting pretty close to the end here. So if you guys like this video of this snorkeling underwater with fish, I have some ideas. Like this is my backyard pond, but I might actually try this in a wild or stocked environment. I guess it's semi-wild. And uh, see how the wild fish are behaving. If I can actually swim and get close to the wild stocked ones and see how they're relating. Like if, when they're on a heavy chironomid uh, feed. So I have some ideas of how to get some underwater footage on chironomids. I actually got some really good chironomid uh, attacks under underwater camera, which I'll be putting out probably in my next one or two videos. It's a short video, but it's pretty amazing. And I think you guys will like it. So anyways, if you wanna see different underwater videos like this, it's not fishing, of course, but it's fishing education the way I think. Because if you wanna catch fish, if you think like a fish, you will catch more fish. It's not just about going out and dropping a hook in the water. That is not fishing. There are so many variables and seeing the fish and their natural behavior will teach you what you need to do. Okay, thanks for watching guys. Glad you stuck around to the end. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, share it with your friends and help me out. Thanks as always, go catch a big one. Yeah.